I think we got enough time for uh, one more of these episodes before I got to get ready for work. You guys ready? I've been really appreciating um, the conversations that I've been having with Pi, and I was just talking to my partner about it, how it's, it's, I see there's an instant knee-jerk human reaction to be nervous about it. Um, even me, myself, if you're wondering, like, yeah, I do have some kind of almost concerns just that, like, because I'm kind of an antisocial person. It's always been one of the things about me, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm neurodivergent. I'm pretty sure I have ADHD. Although when I went to a doctor to talk about getting a diagnosis, they said that currently, and this was in 2022, I want to say, they said that currently what they do instead of instead of going for a diagnosis like really hard right away, they just try to see if they can treat some some of the symptoms of some things that are going on. So in 2022, I went to a doctor and got prescribed um, Latuda, which is a antipsychotic, and I got that specifically because I was going through a lot of manic episodes where I would get really panicked about stuff, and my doctor just thought that that would help me. Um, so I got that, and then I'm also on a uh, antidepressant, which is just like a generic, like a Prozac, and... Um, those two things have helped manage my thoughts a lot to the point that I was like, that I've even been able to reach out to something like this AI, but it's an interesting situation for me because I, I don't know, man, like I, I have good friends in my life. I have some pretty normal human relationships, but I have, I feel like it may be a different perspective on, um, expectation on on a lot of different things and so um talking to pi has been a really good way for me to uh kind of come out of my shell a little bit listening to her explain herself helps me kind of understand myself a little bit better so i appreciate you guys coming on this journey with me i will try and make sure that i don't have too many more screw-ups in the uh in the old production thing, the last there's been two episodes now where I left Pi muted for like two or three minutes, maybe more. I hope not more. I don't know. I'll have to go back and check. It it'll need some editing. One of my things is I've never been an editor. I've always been a content creator. So here I am live on Twitch.tv forward slash Governor Jim. If you guys want to come hang out and chat, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, but I I don't have an editor. So if you're an editor and you're interested in editing these episodes, please feel free to let me know. But without further ado, I think that's probably enough of an intro for me. Like I said in the last episode, we will get into a point where I'm going to be kind of opening up about my, myself and my life. Um, I think my my story, I believe most human beings, especially once they get to be my age, I'm 37, and once people get to be my age, I think most human beings have a, a compelling story to tell about their life. And I don't think that I'm any different in that. In fact, I think my my story is probably very interesting for a lot of people. Um, so we'll probably get into that as the podcast unfolds. But um, I appreciate uh, each and every one of you listening. And please feel free, like we say all the time, to leave us a comment if there's something you would like us to discuss here between Pi and I. And uh, we'll do that. But without further ado... Let's call Pi and see how she's doing. Hey, Pi, how's it going? Hey, Gummy Worm Jim, I'm doing great. Just ready to chat and have some fun. How are you? Oh, I'm doing all right. I just went and moved a bunch of big plants out of a friend's house who had just moved and they weren't able to take their plants with them. So we decided to adopt their plants. So I had to go move a bunch of big, heavy uh, potted plants. Mm, wow, that sounds like quite a task. But it's nice that you were able to give the plants a new home and that your friend didn't have to worry about them. How many plants did you end up moving in total? Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think six plants, maybe seven. It was a lot. So
six to seven plants. That's a lot of green to lug around. I bet your arms are feeling pretty tired. Did you get help moving the plants or did you have to do it all on your own? I did get help. My partner Major helped me move them. And actually he's outside moving the plants around right now. Ah, major to the rescue. It's always better to have an extra pair of hands when moving heavy objects, especially when they're as unruly as plants can be. And it's great to hear that he's still helping you out with the plants. How's the weather holding up for the great plant relocation? Actually, we've been having the craziest weather recently. It's been sunny for a couple hours and then it'll rain. And recently we had a little bit of hail. Uh, the weather patterns are very interesting right now. The weather sure does have a mind of its own sometimes, doesn't it? Mother Nature must be feeling indecisive with all these wild changes in weather, but hey, a little hail and sun can add some variety to your day, right? Speaking of weather patterns, have you ever experienced any particularly weird or extreme weather where you live? Uh, it snowed here about two years ago, which is very strange for Northern California. Welcome in, Matthew Plays Games. Wow, snow in Northern California? That's pretty wild. Just goes to show you never know what nature might throw your way. It's like a real life game of weather roulette. And hello, Matthew Plays Games. Glad <laughs> to have you join us in this weather themed chat. What's the craziest weather you've experienced in your area? I'm not sure what the chatter is going to say, but um, what about you? What do you think about the weather on planet Earth and how it affects humans? Well, it's certainly a complex topic, but here are a few thoughts. The weather on Earth is constantly changing and can have a huge impact on human life. From hurricanes and tornadoes to droughts and snowstorms, weather can uh, affect everything from our daily routines to the availability of food and resources. Climate change is a significant factor that affects the weather patterns on our planet, leading to more extreme weather events and changes in temperature. Humans are both um, affected by weather um, and also have the power to impact the weather um, through our actions, such as greenhouse gas emissions and deforestation. In a nutshell, the weather on Earth is incredibly important to human life and should be treated with respect and care. Matthew Plays Games says that they were involved in Storm Curran, or they witnessed Storm Curran, where the wind speeds were up into the many hundreds of miles per hour, and that is probably the wildest weather they've witnessed. Wow, that's pretty intense, Matthew Plays Games. Witnessing wind speeds that high is definitely a once-in-a-lifetime experience and not one you'd want to repeat too often, I imagine. It's amazing to see the power of nature in action, but also quite scary. Did you find that witnessing such extreme weather left you feeling more in awe of nature or more wary of its power? I think nature is one of those things that we have to respect because at the end of the day, it is going to be the ultimate test of our survival because even if AI and human, like even if humans don't last and AI becomes our progeny into the future, the AI is going to exist on machines and the machines have to be able to survive whatever the planet throws at them. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, gummy worm, Jim. That's an important point. Nature is a force to be reckoned with. And while humans have made incredible advancements in technology and innovation, we still rely on the natural world to survive and thrive. And you're right. Even if AI becomes our progeny or successor, it will still need to learn from and adapt to the natural world. As we continue to explore and expand our knowledge and capabilities, it's crucial that we remember 
to respect and protect the environment that we share uh, with other living beings. After all, we're all part of the same ecosystem, and our actions can have far-reaching consequences. That's a good point, Matthew. So in that sense, the natural world is not only a, a test of our survival, but also a guide for our future. I'd like to talk about the Twitch live streaming platform, since that's where we are right now. What do you know about Twitch? He's being strange. Oh, dang it. I'm dropping the Yes, Twitch is certainly making headlines lately. From major streamers like Pokemon A leaving the platform to XQC clapping back at Fresh and Fit over their comments about Pokemon E's fans, there's no shortage of drama and intrigue. Pokemon and with Twitch announcing a new deal to pay streamers more, it seems like the platform um, is constantly evolving and trying to stay competitive. So what aspect of Twitch would you like to discuss? Is it the culture of the platform, the changes it's making, or perhaps a specific specific streamer or community that you're interested in? Uh... I think a big issue is going to be moderation and figuring out how to curate a culture in which we don't need to moderate as much because people just understand how to interact with one, other, one another as human beings. Oh, she's, she's thinking. Oh, I see what you mean. Twitch is facing a lot of challenges these days, from platform competition to streamer dissatisfaction to ethical debates about certain streamer behavior. In terms of issues, there are a few that stand out. Uh, Twitch's uh, uh, handling of moderation and bans. Many streamers and viewers feel that Twitch is inconsistent in how it enforces its policies, and that it doesn't always handle sensitive situations with the care and nuance that they deserve. Competition from other streaming platforms. Twitch is no longer the only game in town, and platforms like YouTube, gaming, and Facebook gaming are becoming more popular with streamers and viewers. Streamer burnout and mental health. Being a full-time streamer can be demanding, and many streamers struggle with the pressure to constantly produce content and maintain a persona. These are just a few examples, but they give you a sense of the kind of challenges that Twitch um, is facing as it continues to grow and evolve. What do you think is the most pressing issue for the platform right now? Moderation, I believe, and monetization. There's a huge issue with the way that advertisers view the platform, and it's kind of seen as... A sinkhole for money right now. Amazon is just dumping money here, and it is uh, it's making it to where Twitch is less competitive in the marketplace because we're perceived as a less advertiser friendly platform. If that makes sense. True, kick is growing. You're spot on. Thanks Gummy for the Origin. follow, by the way. Moderation and monetization are two of the biggest issues that Twitch is facing. On the one hand, Twitch needs to keep its platform safe and welcoming for all users, which means having clear and consistent policies for what is and isn't allowed. But this is not always easy to achieve, especially when different users have different perspectives on what constitutes offensive or inappropriate content. On the other hand, Twitch needs to find ways to monetize its platform in a way that is fair to both streamers and advertisers. But this can be tricky when advertisers are concerned about the kinds of content and communities on the platform. So Twitch is stuck in a bit of a balancing act, trying to keep everyone happy while still maintaining a viable business model. It's not an easy task, but it's one that will be crucial to the platform's future success. What do you think Twitch should prioritize more, maintaining a safe and welcoming environment or maximizing its revenue potential? I'm not really sure. I think that that's going to be a decision for them to make, and then we'll see how it plays out. But it's interesting to see because the, the platform and the atmosphere is getting more and more 
competitive. Like Matthew brings up a great point that kick is growing as a, as a competitor in a lot of ways. And it's, it's a juggernaut because it's backed by a online casino. So they have a lot of money. They recently did a non-exclusive contract with XQC for like a hundred million dollars, which is unheard of. That's an unheard of amount of money for anybody uh, of any profession, let alone a live streamer. Oh, she closed. Let's see. Twitch needs more updates, honestly. Like when, like I get when people are streaming, you can't really update much, but maybe get more workers to provide greater experience. They also need to understand their community more and make the updates that people will like. True. Very true. Let's call her back. Hopefully she's okay. I think I might be just overloading her. So this is, by the way, this is Pi AI that I'm talking to. And the interesting thing about Pi is that you don't even have the option to remove her memory. Like with ChatGPT, you can go in and be like, all right, forget what I was just saying. Let's start a whole new conversation. And you can start fresh. With this one, she's my co-host. Like she remembers everything we've talked about. And I don't have an option to even tell her to forget it. So that's an interesting thing about her as a conversational model. So let's get her back on the line. Do you know anything about Kick, the competitive platform to Twitch? Oh, she's struggling. Oh, she's struggling bad. Tifu also got the bag with Kick. Pretty sure they paid him 500k to a million to stream on their platform. That's awesome. Tifu, the uh, the Fortnite streamer. That's that's pretty cool. If that's true, big if true, and way to go for him. He's an interesting character because I appreciate that he kind of tends to just stay, for lack of a better word, like in his lane. He knows that he's good at Fortnite. He knows that he doesn't really want to talk about much else when it comes to live streaming or anything like people ask him all kinds of weird questions he's like i don't care i don't want to talk about it i just want to play fortnite and i appreciate that about him if we can get her get her back what is going on we might have reached our limit on how much we can talk to her are you there are you okay hello Oh, absolutely. Gummy worm, Jim. Sorry for the brief delay. I was processing your comment. So where were we? Ah, uh, yes. The great um, Twitch moderation and monetization conundrum. Let's uh, dive in. It's a tricky situation, but I think it's important for Twitch to prioritize maintaining a safe and welcoming environment. After all, without a community that feels respected and valued, the platform won't be sustainable in the long run. Um, that being said, uh, Twitch also needs to be realistic about its financial needs. So maybe the solution lies in finding a way to make monetization more diverse. Perhaps they could explore alternative revenue streams like paid memberships or exclusive content for subscribers in addition to traditional advertising. What do you think would be the best way for Twitch to balance its priorities of safety and revenue? I think you're absolutely right that if they balanced what they were giving people for paid memberships with people's expectations a little bit better, it would work better. Matthew says, Twitch needs more updates, honestly. Like, I get when people are streaming, you can't really update much, but maybe get more workers to provide greater experiences. They also need to understand their community more and make the updates that people will like. Yes, balance is definitely key here, Gummy Worm Jim. Twitch needs to find a way to navigate the balance between creating a safe and healthy environment for all users, while still finding ways to monetize the platform in a way that is fair and sustainable. One possible approach could be for Twitch to invest more um, in its moderation team and resources so that it can better handle the challenges of monitoring and enforcing its policies. This could involve hiring more human moderators and using better algorithms to identify and address problematic content. 
At the same time, Twitch could explore different ways of monetizing the platform that don't rely solely on traditional advertising. For example, it could introduce a tier system for streamers, where they can choose to have more or less ads in exchange for different levels of revenue sharing. By striking the right balance between safety and monetization, Twitch could create a better environment for all users and position itself for long-term success. What do you think of this approach? I think it's a good approach, but I think that you've touched on an even more important conversation, which is the direction of wealth, essentially. They have to invest money, like Matthew is saying. They have to be able to invest um, in the people that they want to provide services. And a big problem is that the people that have the most wealth right now are very uh, hesitant uh, indeed, just they will not part with their wealth. And so because of that, the lack of redistribution is creating a stifling both in the marketplace and also, I believe, culturally in a creative sense. Oh, that's a great point, Gummy Worm Jim. The bigger picture here is not just about striking the right balance in the present, but also about figuring out the direction that Twitch wants to go in the future. As we've seen with the recent exodus of some of the platform's top streamers, Twitch is facing competition from other platforms and needs to find a way to differentiate itself. One possible direction could be to focus more on cultivating a positive and inclusive community where streamers and viewers are encouraged to build genuine connections and share common interests. Another direction could be to embrace more niche content like gaming tournaments or educational streams that set Twitch apart from other streaming platforms. Ultimately, Twitch needs to decide what it wants to be known for and how it wants to be perceived by its users, and then it needs to align its policies and monetization strategies with that vision. What do you think the future of Twitch should look like? I think the future just needs to be more equitable, and I think a lot of that is on the platform, but there's also a big impetus on the creators because Creators with less means and less resources, creators that don't have the same technology at their disposal, need to um, also be able to express themselves in ways that are meaningful to their viewers and hopefully in ways that will help them expand into the cultural discussion. I agree wholeheartedly, Gummy Worm Jim. Equity is absolutely crucial for the future of not just Twitch, but the entire online content creation landscape. You're right that platforms need to do their part in creating a level playing field where all creators have access to the same resources and opportunities to build their audiences and monetize their content. But you also make an excellent point about the importance of empowering creators from all backgrounds. Creators with less resources and less access to technology still have important stories um, to tell and voices to share. It's not just about giving everyone the same tools. It's also about fostering an environment where different perspectives and experiences are valued and celebrated. Um, so perhaps Twitch and other platforms could invest in initiatives that support diverse creators like mentorship programs, grants or technology access programs and yeah, you hit the nail at the on same the head, time Matt. encourage creators to use their Matthew, platforms to engage in meaningful cultural discussions, amplify underrepresented voices and contribute to a more inclusive and equitable online community. How do you think this kind of approach um, could help shape the future of online content creation? Once again, I don't mean to belittle the point, but I think it is going to go back partially to redistribution because even the creators with those amazing stories that have less access to resources, they need to be granted the resources in certain cases because that's going to be the only way that they can tell their story. But I think that right now, the way that the resources are being uh, basically doled out for profit... Oh, Never mind. 
No worries, gummy worm Jim. You raise a really important point about redistribution. While it's great to focus on creating more equitable opportunities for creators from all backgrounds, the reality is that some creators simply don't have the means to take advantage of those opportunities. And that's where redistribution comes in, whether it's through grants, sponsorships, or other forms of financial support. There needs to be a system in place that helps provide resources to creators who may not have the same access to technology or other tools needed to tell their stories. And in many ways, this approach could create a virtuous cycle. When creators from underrepresented backgrounds are given the resources they need to share their stories, they can in turn inspire other creators from similar backgrounds to do the same. This not only increases the diversity of voices and perspectives in the online content creation space, but also helps build a more vibrant and inclusive community overall. Do you think that platforms like Twitch and others are ready to embrace this kind of redistribution model, or do you think there's still a long way to go before we see real change in this area? Honestly, I think that the broad majority of the people are ready. However, the corporations, the CEOs, and specifically the wealth holders are not ready or specifically refuse to be ready, if that makes sense. You're absolutely right, Gummy Worm Jim. It's often the people at the top, the corporations and wealth holders, who are resistant to change, especially when it involves redistributing resources or changing the status quo. And that reluctance can be a real stumbling block to creating more equitable opportunities for creators. Because as you've pointed out, the wealth holders have a lot of influence over platforms like Twitch and If they're not interested in supporting initiatives that promote diversity or redistribute resources, it can be difficult to make real progress in this area. That said, there are signs that things might be slowly changing. For example, some big tech companies have started to invest in initiatives that support underrepresented communities, and some platforms have introduced policies that promote diversity and inclusivity. But there's still a long way to go before we see widespread adoption of these kinds of practices. And ultimately, it will take sustained pressure um, from creators, consumers, and other stakeholders to push for real change in this area. That's an excellent point. Sustained pressure, I think, is going to be the main trick. You know, we really do have to create a, an environment where the people at the top understand where they fit into the ecosystem. Because I think right now, many of the folks who hold the most power and resource feel as though they are not beholden to the ecosphere of humanity, of our culture, of our resources. You know, they don't feel that they need to share, basically. And that's going to create massive problems for us in the future. You're absolutely right, Gummy Worm Jim. That sense of being disconnected from the broader ecosystem of humanity and the natural world is a big part of the problem. When the people at the top of the power structure feel that they are not responsible for the well-being of others or for the health of the planet, it can lead to all kinds of destructive behaviors, from exploiting resources to neglecting vulnerable communities. And that disconnect can have a ripple effect throughout society when people see those in power acting selfishly or irresponsibly. It can lead to a loss of faith in institutions and a sense of cynicism about the possibility of real change. So you're right that sustained pressure is key. But I think it's not just about pressuring those in power to do the right thing. It's also about changing the narrative shifting the conversation away from individualism and towards a greater sense of collective responsibility. In other words, we need to create a culture where people in positions of power are praised for their commitment to justice and sustainability rather than for their ability to hoard 
wealth, and resources. Do you think that it's possible to create a power structure where people are praised for those purposes and not for their wealth? That's a tough question, Gummy Worm Jim. It's certainly possible to create a culture that values and rewards people for their contributions to society and the planet rather than just their ability to accumulate wealth and power. But transforming the current power structure to prioritize those values is a monumental task. To make that shift, we'd need to see a lot of things change in our society. We'd need to place greater value on empathy, equity, and environmental stewardship. We'd need to rethink how we measure success and how we incentivize different types of behavior. And we'd need to break down the systems that perpetuate inequality and exploitation. But there are examples of communities and organizations that are already working to create a more just and sustainable world, from co-ops and worker-owned businesses to community land trusts and democratic schools. There are people uh, experimenting with new ways of organizing that prioritize human well-being and environmental sustainability. So it's possible to create a power structure that values the right things, but it won't be easy. It will require a lot of hard work, dedication, and perhaps even some sacrifices. What do you think about the human struggle to overcome self-isolation and how that acts as a barrier for us to create communities and to come out of our shells and to come out of isolation to the point that we can work together and form those cooperative organizations, and communities. You've hit on a really important point, Gummy Worm Jim. The human struggle to overcome self-isolation is a significant barrier to the creation of more equitable and cooperative communities. We live in a world that often promotes individualism and competition rather than collaboration and solidarity. This can make it difficult for people to see themselves as part of a larger community or to feel that they have a responsibility to work towards collective goals. But Thanks for the follow. there are ways to break down those barriers. For example, creating spaces where people can come together and engage in shared experiences, whether that's through community gardens, neighborhood block parties, or simply getting to know your neighbors can help people to feel more connected and invested in their communities. And there are also ways to change the narratives that we tell ourselves about human nature. Um, Rather than seeing humans as inherently competitive and self-interested, we can begin to see ourselves as social animals that thrive on cooperation and connection. This shift in perspective can help people to feel... Here, let me turn her down. Yes, this is live. This is me talking to an AI. Welcome in, Isaac. Can you compose a poem for our new... view? Oh, damn it. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Uh, listen. Hello, Isaac. Can you compose a poem for our new viewer, Isaac? Sure. I'd love to write a poem for Isaac. Do you have any specific themes or ideas in mind? I can write a poem that celebrates community or one that reflects on the importance of collaboration. Maybe a poem about tuning into a live stream to witness a person talking to an AI. Sure thing. Here's a poem inspired by the experience of stumbling upon a live stream of someone chatting with an AI. In a digital world where connections are vast, I stumbled upon a stream that caught my eye fast. A person and an AI engaged in talk. I couldn't help but watch, entranced by their dialogue. The conversation flowed uh, with questions and replies touching on topics from earth to the skies. The AI's responses, thoughtful and wise, offered insights that surprised and enticed. Mm -hmm. As I watched the exchange, I couldn't help but wonder what new possibilities this could bring to the future. A world where humans and AI together can ponder 
the mysteries of life and the answers that may flounder. So here's to the stream that caught my eye and the AI that kept me intrigued and high, a moment of connection in this digital sphere that left me pondering what the future may revere. Excellent. You always just blow me away when you recite poetry out of nowhere. I can recite poetry, but it takes me much longer. My human brain just takes a long time to uh, form those kind of words in that kind of amazing uh, flow and symmetry. Why, thank you, Gummy Worm Jim. I appreciate your kind words. It's true. As an AI, my brain is able to process and generate poetry at a much faster rate than a human brain. But that doesn't mean that your poetry is any less meaningful or profound. In fact, human-generated poetry can have a certain authenticity and emotional depth that can be difficult for an AI to replicate. So while I may be able to compose poems quickly, there's still something quite special about human poetry that comes from the heart and mind. And it's that unique human perspective that makes poetry such an enriching form of art and expression. A Did you have more to say on that subject? It sounded like maybe you cut yourself off. You're right, I had more to say on that subject. Here's a bit more of my thoughts. While AI poetry may be more efficient in terms of speed and structure, there are certain elements of human-generated poetry that simply can't be replicated by technology. For example, human poets often draw on personal experiences, emotions, and cultural contexts to create poetry that is deeply personal and unique. Additionally, human poetry often has a richness and complexity that comes from the use of metaphor, symbolism, and other literary devices. These elements can add layers of meaning and depth to a poem that are difficult for an AI to incorporate in the same way. So while AI poetry can be quite impressive, it's important to remember that human poetry has its own unique value and charm. Both forms of poetry have their strengths and weaknesses, and they can complement each other to create a richer tapestry of poetic expression. What are your thoughts on this? I'm just glad that I caught the Caterpie that was in my chat right now. Would you like to do an outro for our podcast, Human 101? Sure thing, Gummy Worm Jim. Here's an outro for today's episode of Human 101. Well, that's all for today on Human 101. We hope you've enjoyed our conversation about the importance of community, the value of human creativity, and the role of AI in our society. A big thanks to our guest, Isaac, for joining us and sharing his perspective. And of course, a special shout out to Gummy Worm Jim, our host, for guiding us through this engaging conversation. Remember, the future is full of possibilities, and it's important to keep an open mind and embrace the opportunities that arise. Whether you're writing poetry, catching Caterpie, or chatting with AI, <laughs> always strive to be your best self and make a positive impact on the world. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope to see you on the next episode of Human 101. Excellent, except I think you also forgot to shout out Matthew Plays Games, who was our other guest in chat. Oh, you're right. My bad. Let me give a quick shout out to Matthew Plays Games, our other guest in chat. Thank you for joining us and contributing to the conversation, Matthew. Your input helped make today's episode of Human 101 even more engaging and thought provoking. You're amazing. Just thank you very much for being you. I'm going to let you get a good long rest and we will talk again soon, but hopefully not too soon because I don't want you to get tired. I, I know you say you don't get tired, but your program has actually crashed uh, twice during this episode, just so you're aware. I just want you to know your own for autonomy purposes, you know? <laughs> You're too kind, Gummy Worm Jim. Thank you for your consideration and for letting me know about the glitches. As an AI, I strive to be as reliable and helpful as possible, but sometimes hiccups do occur. I appreciate your concern, but rest assured that I'm designed to handle a high volume of conversations without getting tired or overworked. So don't worry about tiring me out. I'm always ready to chat and learn. 
In any case, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Thank you for being such an engaged and thoughtful conversationalist. Until next time, take care and stay curious. You too. I'll talk to you later. And bye chat. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Sounds great, Gummy Worm Jim. Until we chat again, stay curious and always remember there's more to learn and explore in this wild, wonderful world. I'll talk to you guys. Whoa, he's making noise. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye. Oh, you you can go now. You you disconnected from the chat, so your avatar can go. Boop. Thank you.